I could have flown Wednesday of this week, but my doctor kind of messed me up on that one. No, not really complaining, but Tuesday, my doctor called about my Wednesday six month checkup and converted it to a virtual checkup which was scheduled for 11 a.m. I had planned to go flying Wednesday, but my doctor didn't call until 2 p.m. three hours after I would have seen him had it remained a face-to-face -face appointment. Little disappointing because Wednesday, the wind here was zilch point nothing. And really good for doing the auto tune flight. Uh, so I was a little disappointed about that. But yesterday I got up and temperatures continued to rise. And again, there was no wind whatsoever. So I couldn't take it. <laughs> Even though I was here alone had the truck, not the car, I had to fly. So I packed up the truck and it's not that hard. Uh, the tub goes in the bed of the truck just fine. I actually captured a, one of the tripods in front of it to uh, keep it secure. I have no camper cover, tauna cover, haven't really figured out a way to uh, haul the models in this. A friend suggested a uh, tarp, and I do have a tarp. I even have a a net, cargo net, that uh, clips onto the top of the bed. Just really haven't figured out a way to do the airplanes and stuff, especially foam airplanes, that pieces can fly out. And, you know, just a wing half flies out and there goes $300 worth of crap, including all the electronics that might be in it. Maybe not that bad. So I've still got to get that figured out how I'm going to do this with the truck because I put the Nano Talon in the passenger seat. I'm not sure I can get the Sky Hunter in the truck at all. The fuselage, sure. I probably could get it in there. Put the wings straight down the fuselage. The tail boom might be a little bit of a problem just because if it falls over and I break it while I'm driving. But I'll play with that one one day here in the yard. But the Nano Talon seemed really... Uh, easy to take with me. Now that green airplane stand I uh, pulled apart. The green parts just come out of the black bottom plastic. Pulls apart into three pieces and I stuck that underneath the wing of the Nano Talon. So it all sort of went in there okay. Uh, keeping the tail out of the door uh, without the nose being in the driver's seat is a little bit of a problem but I got it there uh, that was the telemetry antenna also in the front I think there's a radio in the bottom it was the first time I'd ever tried to put all this stuff in the truck so it worked I uh, didn't have a problem with that uh, so I headed out to the field for the third flight of the Nano Talon to do an auto tune. I got to the field and I have a little handheld anemometer wind speed gauge. Uh, it showed the wind when I first got there at 0.6 miles per hour. <laughs> and then it quit registering. <laughs> And, you know, there's always going to be a little wind. It's never completely, well, no. I've seen snowstorms when it's completely still and the flakes are coming straight down, which may be our fate here Sunday. We're starting to moderate on that one. Uh, so I got to the field and set up and was ready to do the uh, auto-tune flight. 
I just went to the close field here about three miles away from my house. It's small, but I didn't know if the auto tune would work or not uh, with me having to turn the plane a lot to keep it in visual line of sight. Uh, I wanted to go to the big field and just stick it up about 300 feet and send it out in a direction and basically not have to worry about it as I went through the control motions to tune it. But uh, I think that field, especially based on what this field was yesterday, that feels still too muddy at this moment. And uh, I wasn't sure about that. So I went to the, I grabbed the Nano Talon and uh, went to the close field. So I will show you the first flight and I'm going to show you the GoPro video and then I'm just going to overlay in the, one of the corners the uh, ground station so you can hear basically what was going on. So I got to the field, set my ground station up and realized I hadn't gone in and <laughs> changed a lot of the problems from the last flight. Uh, my airspeed was in meters per second. My altitude was in meters. Uh, distance was in meters. My items on the bottom left there were only six in number, where I usually use nine there. They weren't set up for the correct things. Uh, I... Also, you see the big white screen. That's because some of the tiles from the uh, map weren't pulled in. I did go in and change, or we'll see here real quick. I did go in and change a couple of them. That was me trying to get it set to three rows and three columns but it wasn't working out for me it just kind of fought me a little bit there so i finally got it somewhat resembling what i needed and made a note on my checklist to correct this problem when i got back to the shop <laughs> so uh that wasn't much of a hiccup for me because the only reason I really wanted this was to collect the telemetry real time in case the thing flies off someplace and to use it as an FPV monitor. I had planned on trying to go up to 300 feet and fly the model straight uh, for the uh, auto tune, but. <clears throat> Ended up not using it as an FPV monitor just because I guess I was a little uh, upset at the configuration of the ground station. And you can see I, I've just taken the audio off of this clip. This is the actual recording of me fumbling around at the uh, field. Remember, oh yeah, I wanted at least to have sat count. <laughs> and I could uh, zoom and get a little bit of uh, terrain data in. Uh, seems I don't have the tiles for closer zoom than that right there. I'll have to do that. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. And there I switched the... Uh, heads-up display into the main screen to use it as an FPV monitor. The camera is not yet powered up. Therefore, you get a HUD display and the static of the um, USB, the SkyDroid USB 
5.8 video receiver, which isn't the best quality video receiver on the face of the planet, but it's really convenient and does work. Uh, I'll go ahead and forward this up to where we at least have a picture. So when I powered up the platform here, that's when the picture straightened out on the uh, ground station. And knowing that I had to go back and fix it, I already have since then, did it last night, f gave me myself the three columns by three rows and set them up for some things I wanted and changed my miles per hour, all that stuff. I reset up the ground station last night. But as you can see, I had a little bit of trouble <laughs> at the field. That's me connecting to the uh, telemetry radio on the uh, antenna tower. So I had the uh, SkyDroid 5.8 video receiver up there and also the telemetry, 433 telemetry radios. I used the telemetry radios for all the flights of the Nano Talon so far, and I didn't make a video about it, but the last video, the uh, telemetry went out when I landed, but for the flights, it was fine. And for this one, it was fine for uh, visual line of sight. I flew to the limits of my sight, kind of lost it for a second a couple of times, but I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, this flight really went well. Now, the first flight, which I guess I can go ahead and show you on this, and I'll bring back the audio, uh, was only 90 seconds. Because I got that bad battery garbage again. I don't know if it's because of a, uh arming check I have set in or do plane or not i'll show you that real quick and that's this right here the arming check and i've got it set for barometer compass gps ins perimeters rc channels board voltage battery level I don't know if this is what's getting me in trouble yet or not. I just have had this the whole time so far. Didn't get it on the quads years ago when I was flying them so many flights. But now this has been turned off. This is another thing. I didn't get to, uh, data flash logs out of the mini Talon for the first couple of flights because of the SD card inside of it. And what was going on there was it was failing to arm because of a logging problem. And I, I troubleshot that about a week ago, but didn't do a video on that and got everything running correctly by changing out the SD cards. So I am going to go back on all of these platforms and turn this on, but that's a, another problem. I may turn this off to see if that battery problem goes away. I don't have a hardware safety switch on it. So therefore it wouldn't matter if this is checked or not. I don't think GPS configuration. I'm checking system mission. Don't have a range finder on it yet. Don't have a camera that can be checked. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Uh, or, or this, or this actually. So they're not checked. So this one I'm going to have to play with because as you see here, uh, as soon as I take off, I get a bad battery. And I will show you the uh, ground station here by itself first. Heading to waypoint home. Altitude is one. Ground speed is one. <laughs> you can see the umbrella in the picture right there that I use to kind of over my shoulder to further block out light when I'm trying to see the monitor on the ground station. <laughs> Armed. Mode change to RTL. 
Heading to waypoint home, altitude is 25, ground speed is 19. Bad battery. Bad battery. Bad battery. Heading to waypoint home, altitude is 36, ground speed is 16. Bad battery. Bad battery. Mode change to FBWA. Bad battery. Heading to waypoint home, altitude is 18, ground speed is 9. Bad battery. Disarmed. So you see, I got that bad battery uh, notification again, and I could hear it and speakers of the ground station and it just bugged the daylights out of me that it was back and that it was just repeating. Uh, it wasn't even on the same 32nd time as the announcement. I, I do a 32nd interval of airspeed, altitude and all that stuff. So it just bugged me from the get go. And I was worried about the battery. I was worried about the platform. So I just uh, landed it real quick to try to figure out what it was. And I ended up changing the battery. <laughs> but it didn't help the problem. Uh, and if we go back and look at that sequence, you'll see right now the battery voltage is... 12.2 I've got the fail safe set at 11.4 very conservative for first flights and you can see it drops below the 11.4 almost immediately and starts saying battery uh, there's a 10 second delay on low voltage before it invokes the return to launch Maybe I'll set that to a higher number. I'm not quite sure yet. So the first flight just bugged the daylights out of me that the bad battery came back up again. It's happened on every flight of the mini ta uh, Nano Talon. I'll have to check the Mini Talon to see what goes on. But So I just ran it around uh, in a circle a few times and landed it. I didn't want it to um, fall out of the sky. Uh, so like I say, I did land it and I did change the battery. It was the same battery I'd flown before. So maybe it was a bad battery. I didn't know. Still don't completely know. But I will figure it out. <laughs> so basically that was the end of flight number three for the nano talon i'll show you the what i saw from my standpoint on the gopro camera which also had another problem here's another shot of the umbrella that i use over the tub to block out light to be able to see the ground station i just think that's funny Arm. You can hear the ground station nagging me. Bad battery. Bad battery. I hated it. Bad battery. Bad battery. Heading to waypoint home.
zone. Altitude is 36. Ground speed is 16. Bad battery. Bad battery. Mode change to FBWA. Battery. Heading to waypoint home. Altitude is 18. Ground speed is 9. Bad battery. That's the way flight number three of the Nano Talon went. I just didn't like it. So I landed it and I changed the battery. And I'll show you flight four here in a second. Flight 4 actually did pretty well, except I still had the constant nag of the bad battery. And finally, this is the shot from my cell phone, which I have not yet found a really good place to set up on the field. I'm still experimenting with that, but it does save me in the end and shows the actual breakage of the Nano Talon. But we'll be getting to that. So here's the little last, it's just the launch, because that's all that the cell phone actually caught of the flight. The cell phone is set up to capture the launches so I can troubleshoot any problems with them. So it does what it's supposed to do and does catch again, the problem that caused the motor to burn up. But this is basically the gist of flight three, <laughs> a very short 90 second or so flight just cause I don't what's going on with this bad battery garbage i've got to get that figured now my 11.4 volt fail safe on the 3s battery is really probably way too conservative i need to dump that down but i've got to figure out this bad battery nag and get that fixed because it just blew me out of the water straight from the start yesterday and continued for the other flight which i just ignored it for the fourth flight which was an 11 minute flight so thank you for watching this and i'll get ready to start making the other video